Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to consider the news that the Brexit party will not, after all, put up candidates in the 317 seats that the Conservatives won in 2017. Of course, they don't still have all those seats. Now, on the face of it, this helps pro-Brexit parties, but really, it could be more of a hindrance. But first, if you'd like to receive notifications for upcoming content, then please click the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. So let's have a look at the build up to this announcement. So Nigel Farage had been doing, talking in interviews. Um, we have to remember, of course, he is not the leader of the Brexit party, nor is he providing the financial backing, who is, is still a bit of a mystery, has to be said. Farage is just their PR monkey, but he had been demanding a pact with Boris Johnson's Conservatives in order to maximise their seats. The idea was that they wouldn't contest the seats of hardline Conservative candidates, but would of others. Naturally, Johnson wasn't going to fall for that very obvious trap. The benefit to the Brexit party was that the Conservatives couldn't win a majority if the Brexit party were properly against them, and the Conservatives in Parliament would need the Brexit Party MPs to pass anything through. Their plan was that Brexit Party MPs plus Conservative MPs would equal a majority, they'd have to form a coalition. So in that way, the Brexit Party would have power over Conservative policy in government. But there was no benefit to the Conservatives. Johnson was instead advised to move the party position massively to the right in order to make Farage's Brexit Party irrelevant. And it looks like he succeeded. The Brexit party are not going to stand against the Conservatives in the election. Or so it's been reported in much of the popular media. The reality is that they still could. Sure, they're not standing in seats that the Conservatives won in 2017, which absolutely helps the pro-Brexit movement and hinders the Remain movement. No argument about that. There are even safe Tory seats that were looking decidedly dodgy before this announcement. After all, with Johnson's lurch to the far right, Many long-time moderate Conservative supporters, and I know there's many watch this channel, they say as much in the comments, are seriously considering not voting for him or have already decided that. There are also a few, a small number, of big-name former Tories standing as independent Conservatives, such as Dominic Grieve, who will peel votes away from the new and largely unknown candidate. Some former Conservative voters may vote for a different candidate altogether, some may not vote at all, not really wanting to vote for anyone else, but not wanting to vote Conservative. They may stay at home. That's serious for the Conservatives, but not as serious as them voting for someone else. Now, in addition, the Brexit party would inevitably have nibbled away at the hardline pro-Brexit votes in those constituencies. This could easily have led to a hitherto incapable candidate gaining the seat. And across 317 constituencies, it's inevitable that there would have been conservative casualties. You would think a good number as well, which is why I kept referring to the Brexit party as Remain secret weapon. If they'd have put candidates in every single seat and run a good campaign like they did earlier in the year, when I say good, I don't necessarily mean legal, I mean effective, then that would have been curtains for the Tories. However, I did also note recently that although I believe Farage himself doesn't want Brexit because he loses his seat on the gravy train, the real power behind the party absolutely do. They do want it. I couldn't see them putting up candidates against Conservative strongholds and seeing pro-Remain candidates winning them. I said as much when Nigel Farage said, I'm going to put 600 candidates out. Rubbish. And so it's proven that they're not. And so, as I said, when I said that uh, not to believe Farage when he said they were putting up those 600 candidates, this is why. And it goes beyond simple dishonesty. They will say one thing one day and another the next as it as it suits their aims. So, is this bad for pro-Remain voters? Well, it's not as good as it could have been, but it isn't necessarily bad either. They still say they're putting up candidates. So the implication at the moment, and we won't know until I think it's November the 14th, a few days time, when registrations have to be in, we won't really know where they're putting their candidates, but the implication is that they will be putting them in lots of other constituencies. Now, although we don't know exactly where they're going to place those candidates, and as I say, we're not going to until registrations, are, the deadline's passed, if they are going to stand any at all, and maybe they won't stand any, but if they're going to stand any at all, 
it would surely be at least in strong leave labour seats. That potentially helps remain. Few provisos. But the reason for this, first of all, is as follows. So the seats that the Brexit party are not contesting, those 317 Tory seats in 2017, are not all going to be won by the Conservatives. It's not just the Brexit party that challenges those seats. Some of them will be lost to other parties due to dissatisfaction with the Conservatives since 2017 or just general dissatisfaction with Boris Johnson, or renewed appreciation for another party. So the Conservatives, you would think, are certainly going to get fewer than 317 MPs from those constituencies. In other words, they need to win some seats that they didn't win two and a half years ago. Their targets will be those strong leave constituencies currently held by Labour. But oh look, the Brexit party are going to be active there, and sure, they'll take some votes away from the Labour candidate, I've no doubt, except, and, you know, actual election results this year have backed this up, most pro-Brexit Labour supporters will not move from Labour to the Brexit party. This is because the Lexiteers, as they're called, are also very pro-Jeremy Corbyn. This limits the damage of the Brexit party on Labour votes. But results earlier this year also showed that the Brexit party take three times as many votes from the Conservatives as from Labour. This is because there are plenty of Conservative voters who are sufficiently hard right that they can consider even a very much more right wing Tory government to be not quite right wing enough for them. So if you have a Labour seat where Brexit could make it a tight race between Labour and the Conservatives, a rampant Brexit party candidate is pretty good news for the Labour candidate. And there are two reasons why the Labour candidate will welcome the Brexit party into the race. One, yes, they will lose some pro-Brexit votes to this candidate, but not as many as their Tory rival. And two, they may stand to lose pro-Brexit votes to the Conservatives under normal circumstances. Remember, every vote you lose to your rival is like two votes because you're losing one and they're gaining one. It closes the gap by two. But if they switch their vote from you to someone else who's not likely to win, then it's only one lot vote lost. And remember, it's three votes lost for the Tory candidate. Brilliant. Now, it's the Conservative hopeful who will be cursing the presence of Farage as fops in those constituencies. So it's all sounding pretty good if you're pro-Remain. The Brexit party will help Labour retain their tricky seats whilst not being likely to actually capture many, if any, seats themselves. Literally, with this strategy, the chance of them getting any seats is not that high, unless something else happens. Now, that is a win in my books. However, it may not be quite that rosy. The situation really is that Boris Johnson has succeeded in beating the Brexit party up. Now, before I move on, I will just mention the Brexit party have effectively agreed a pact with the Conservatives. The Conservatives haven't agreed any pact, but they may be interested. Let's say there are some strong Labour seats that are strong leave and the Conservatives look at the situation and think, well, we can challenge there, but we probably won't win it. They could decide to stand their candidate down in favour of a strong Brexit party candidate, increasing the chance of a Brexit party candidate winning the seat, taking it from Labour. And they, of course, are more likely to support the Conservatives in government than a Labour MP is. So there is that worry as well. That could be a potential sting there. So in that situation, it's not the Brexit party splitting the vote with the Conservatives. They'd be taking the Conservative votes, all of them, potentially, potentially. Now, if people went out and supported Farage like they did earlier this year, their decision to pull out of those 317 seats would be a big boost for the Conservatives, a massive boost. But it's not, as I say, it's not likely to happen. So the Brexit party, by not standing those 317 Tory seats from 2017, are basically saying that they agree with Boris Johnson's Brexit strategy. It doesn't matter whether that's the reason or not. That's what the public will see. So if the Brexit party are backing Boris Johnson, and that's what people will see, why wouldn't a pro-Brexit voter just vote Conservative, even in a constituency where the Brexit party is fielding a candidate? The position was supposed to be that you should vote Brexit party because you can't trust the Conservatives to deliver Brexit, or at least not properly. But they've undermined their own position with the latest announcement. In addition, the media are already saying that Farage has bottled it. 
He soiled his image last month when he was calling for an extension. Not a wise move when trying to position yourself as the extreme Brexit candidate. In fact, extreme Brexit demagogue. Now he's been reported as given in to the Tories, especially when he was pushed to admit that he'd been offered a peerage in return for his cooperation. So although I'm sure that people will turn out and vote for the Brexit party in seats where they're standing, even if it ends up just being 20 seats in Labour leave areas, I don't think they're going to get many votes. It could even end up being UKIP levels of support from the last general election. They really do seem to have shown themselves up in the eyes of their supporters. And if all they're going to do is nick a few hundred votes from those citizens who have wet dreams about Nigel Farage, then it's not nearly as helpful as taking a few thousand votes and all but guaranteeing a Labour victory. Because there is another fly in the ointment for Remain. And that is ironically the Liberal Democrats. So the Lib Dems are still fielding candidates in constituencies where they have no chance, but there is a tight race between Labour and the Conservatives. Now, if a Brexit party candidate took more Tory votes away from the Tories than the Lib Dems took Labour votes away from Labour, Labour would still take the seat. But if the Brexit party have just made themselves irrelevant, then the Lib Dems, who are most certainly not irrelevant, could result in the Conservatives capturing that seat. Perhaps what should happen now is that Labour should approach the Lib Dems and stand down their candidates in Conservative Lib Dem marginals in return for the Lib Dems standing their candidates down in Labour Conservative marginals, in a quid pro quo, basically, in the interests of stopping Boris Johnson's Brexit. Otherwise, we could end up talking about the Liberal Democrats as not the party that opposed Brexit, but the party who, first of all, empowered David Cameron, gave him the political oxygen necessary to survive long enough to promise the referendum in the first place, and then to enable the Conservative candidates to take Labour seats, thus ending any hope of another referendum if they indeed do get a majority, leading to Johnson's Brexit, hard Brexit, no deal Brexit at the end of 2020. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, please. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.